Hi, I'm Nathan Phillips, and I'm here to pitch you Austin Powers for No Time to Shag. It's a comedy spy movie. Okay, so why am I the person to pitch this? Well, I love breaking the fourth wall, and that's an Austin Powers special throughout all of his movies. I have zero mojo, which is why I get nowhere near the action Austin does. <laughs> Sorry. No, I adore every one of his movies that have been made, and I'm a huge champion of Mike Myers and his comedy. I love dry humor, and sex jokes are never a hard thing for me to make. I'm younger and arguably more hip than most people who would write an Austin Powers feature, so I've grown up in the very environment that Austin is being thrown into in this movie. Okay, so the logline. Austin is back and better than ever in 2022 with the world suffering from multiple crises. But none of that matters because Dr. Evil plans on eclipsing the sun so that the world will bend to his will. With so many problems, does Austin even have time to shag? Okay, so why is it a necessary film? Well. With any Austin Powers film, technology has only improved and the action has gotten bigger and better. Given the fact that it's been two decades since the last film, a lot has changed. Austin's still got his mojo, but is his mojo even useful in a time where there are so many problems to be solved? There's never a time when the world doesn't need Austin Powers, and 2022 is the year better than ever for that kind of silly entertainment. In this entry, Austin's no longer in the 60s where shagging is prevalent, but rather in 2022 where shagging is much more private. What's great about this Austin Powers movie is that Austin is still hilarious, and the movie has a very serious plot. Okay, if you enjoyed Casino Royale, or Ferris Bueller's Day Off, or any other Austin Powers movie for that matter, you'll enjoy No Time to Shag. Okay, so characters. Well, we have Austin Powers, uh, and Dr. Evil is Austin's direct obstacle outside of his inability to focus on the task at hand. He needs to destroy Dr. Evil's spherical eclipse station and save the world. Then we have Daisy Shagerton. She's a special agent sent by Br British intelligence to prevent Austin from getting distracted, but she has the complete opposite effect that the British government intended. And her and Austin need to blow up the eclipse station and save the world. Dr. Evil, you know, Dr. Evil, wants to carry out his evil scheme of bending the world to his will by threatening to block out the sun. He'll do anything to obtain world domination and aims to end Austin Powers, as he does in all of these movies. Okay, so act one. Austin wakes up from chirogenic slumber with the British government hoping that the relic of an older time, being Austin, can serve as a fun inspiration to do better in the dark times we live in. Dr. Evil has a plan to build a Death Star-like object that will eclipse the sun and thus bend the world to his will. Austin has flown to California to meet with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory about what Dr. Evil is having built in space. As NASA attempts to discuss the matters of space and what Dr. Evil's building, Austin pays no attention whatsoever and experiments with the equipment that they're working on for other projects while making terrible jokes. Eventually, they get him to focus on the task at hand, and it's said that they've been working on a small missile-like ship to steer asteroids away from hitting the Earth. However, in using that technology, they haven't ever sent one up to space yet, nor have they had an astronaut with the necessary training to fly up there. They assign him the mission but a few things have to be fixed and discussed while they're working on preparing a working vessel for Austin to pilot. The small little ship, they plan on aiming at the space station and blowing it up, or at least infiltrating it so that they can, you know, cause it to self-destruct or whatever. Okay. Anyhow, Austin is told that the laboratory is yet to clear this with the government officials and the president, and that their satellite system in Nevada requires repair. Austin drives his Shaguar to the satellite site to make repairs. As he starts repairing the three satellite dishes that help control their communication and targeting systems, he comes upon Daisy Shagerton, an additional agent from the British government sent to make sure Austin doesn't get distracted from focusing on the task at hand. Daisy and Austin spend a few days fixing the satellite, and during the time, also go gambling, spend time at a pool, and fall in love. Act 2. The two of them are interrupted in their fun by a call from British intelligence saying that Dr. Evil has almost finished the dish and the sun could be eclipsed any day now. Daisy and Austin quickly drive to Washington to warn Congress and the president of their impending doom. The president understands the desperation of the situation, but tells Austin and Daisy to remain tight-lipped about the world ending because with the tense atmosphere of today's climate already, there's no telling what could push people over the edge. Austin and Daisy understand and drive down to Florida in preparation for being launched into space. Before they can be sent up, Austin and Daisy go through extensive training, but Austin struggles to complete it, both due to his lack of focus and just inability to do difficult things in a proper way. As their time is running out, Austin eventually succeeds. The two of them are s sent a message by Dr. Evil saying his spherical station is fully operational, and unless the world bows down to him as the ruler, he will block out the sun and thus shortly proceed to end all life on Earth. 
As Dr. Evil's sphere starts to eclipse the sun, Austin and Daisy are sent in the small missile-like rocket to destroy the station and stop Dr. Evil from wreaking further havoc on the Earth. There's a small docking bay in the sphere that Austin and Daisy aim to land in. As they exit the Earth's atmosphere and navigate space, they are fired at with lasers by the station. They safely are able to land inside the station, and the two of them search for Dr. Evil. Lo and behold, they find his chair that overlooks the Earth and only discover that he's actually a hologram and that the ship has nearly covered the sun. Dr. Evil then reveals that he's in a new ship that was originally attached to the sphere, and he holds the control to moving the sphere in front of the sun. Dr. Evil phones the United Nations and tells them to surrender. The United Nations convene while the Earth is shrouded in darkness, and they agree to surrender. Austin and Daisy feel helpless until they realize that Dr. Evil has the remote to the sphere and that if the remote blows up, the sphere will self-destruct. Austin targets Dr. Evil's ship with the lasers from the station and blows it up, which promptly sets the sphere to self-destruct. Daisy and Austin scramble to exit the ship and escape just as the sphere explodes. The ship burns up quite heavily upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, and British intelligence fails to get in contact with them. The rocket lands in the Atlantic Ocean, and Daisy and Austin swim to a small island. A rescue, team, a rescue team begins searching for them, and just as Austin finally found time to shag, the two of them are spotted and sent back to headquarters. Darn. Austin, it's the big trailer moments, and this are Austin wakes up from cryogenic slumber to find himself in a completely different world. Austin and Daisy pilot a missile-like ship to attack the, the Death Star-like sphere Dr. Evil is using to eclipse the sun. The sun is fully eclipsed, leaving the Earth with no light. Austin and Daisy go through space training at NASA to prepare for being sent into space. Dr. Evil tells the United Nations to surrender, or else everyone in the world will soon die, and much more. Thank you for listening to my pitch. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it. And yeah, thank you. Groovy, baby.